Welcome to the PowerClerk application tutorial series. PowerClerk is an easy to use web based tool that allows applicants to complete and monitor incentive applications electronically. In this segment, we'll walk you through the reservation request process for a typical incentive program. Each solar electric incentive program has different rules and regulations that applicants must follow, and there are differences in each program's application process. This tutorial will describe a two-step application process. No matter which utility or agency is administering the solar incentive program you're applying for, PowerClerk will be able to provide the information you need to successfully apply for a solar incentive. In a typical two-step program, you first apply for an incentive reservation. Then, once the installation is complete, you make a claim for the incentive. You'll begin the application process by using PowerClerk to fill out and submit an incentive reservation request. Program administrators will review your request and any supporting documents to make sure that the proposed system meets program requirements. As your reservation request is being reviewed, you'll be able to check the status of your application by logging into PowerClerk. Then, depending on program criteria and available funds, the program administrator will confirm your reservation, effectively setting aside the money to pay your incentive. Usually, this means you can begin installing your PV system after obtaining the necessary permits. When installation has been completed according to the program guidelines, you'll use PowerClerk to file an incentive claim form to request payment of your incentive. Check the guidelines for your incentive program to obtain more detailed information on the process. Now let's get started with the reservation request tutorial. When you sign in to PowerClerk, You'll see the list of any incentive applications you've created. To create a new incentive reservation request, click the New Incentive Application button at the upper left corner of the application list. Next, select the incentive program that you want to create an application for. In this example, we'll select the Utility Power Solar Incentive Program. Once you've selected the program, you'll be taken to the Seller Installer page. This page is the first step of the Reservation Request task. Other steps appear in the taskbar at the top of the page. The page that you're currently viewing is indicated by a small pencil in a blue circle. Steps that have not yet been completed have a lighter appearance, while those that are completed or don't require additional information are darker. For the Sample Utility Power Solar Incentive Program, the reservation request is an eight-step process. The steps for your program may vary slightly from this example. Although we recommend that you complete the steps in order, you can easily move between steps by clicking on the taskbar. When you do this, PowerClerk automatically saves information from the page you were just on. It's not necessary to complete applications in a single session either. Once you've created an application, you can always sign out of PowerClerk and come back to edit the application later. On the Seller Installer page, use the drop-down menus to select the Applicant Contact and the Seller Installer Companies and Contacts. If a company you're working with does not appear on the list, they may need to contact the program administrator to request that they be added to that program's list of program participants. When you've finished selecting the applicant, seller, and installer information, click the Next button at the bottom of the page to save your changes and go to the next step in the reservation request process. Note that program administrators will be able to view the information that you enter prior to the application being submitted. The host customer page is used to collect information about the electric rate payer. Depending on the program, additional information may be required. For this example, the rate payer is a residential customer, so you can just enter the contact's first and last name. Next, enter the mailing address. Note that as you type the city name, a list of matching cities in the selected state will appear. 
When you select a city from the list, the county will automatically be filled in and you will be able to select from a list of applicable zip codes. Fill in the customer's phone number and select a phone type. If you need to enter multiple phone numbers, just click the Add Phone Number button. Once you've entered all the phone numbers, enter the customer's email address. If the applicant is the host customer, you can save time by clicking the Pre-Fill with Applicant link near the top of the page. This will replace all of the existing host customer information with the information that's on file for the applicant. When you're done, click the Next button at the bottom of the page to save your changes and move to the System Owner page. The System Owner page is used to collect information about the party that will own the solar electric system. The type of information collected here is the same as that collected on the Host Customer page. If the system owner is the applicant or the seller, you can click the Pre-Fill with Applicant or Pre-Fill with Seller link to automatically fill in the form with the information the program administrator has on file. If the host customer is the system owner, you can select Host Customer from the System Owner Is drop-down menu. This will automatically fill in the system owner form and link the system owner and host customer information so that any future changes will be reflected on both pages, saving time and reducing the potential for error. On the project site page, you'll provide information about the physical location of the solar electric system. Fill in the address where the system will be installed. If the system will be installed at the host customer's address, you can select Host Customer from the Set Same As menu to fill in the host customer's address and link it to the system installation address. The information collected on the project site page will vary depending on the incentive program and may include things such as the building type for the project, the annual electric usage, estimated building area, the electric meter number, the customer's electric rate, the lease duration for lease systems, or whether a building meets residential affordable housing criteria. Once completed, click the Next button to save your changes and proceed to the Project Components page. You'll use the Project Components page to provide details about the specific equipment to be installed and its cost to the customer. Begin by selecting the inverter manufacturer from the drop-down list. A list of inverter models for the selected manufacturer will then appear. When you select the model that you plan to install, the CEC Inverter Efficiency Rating will be displayed, and you'll be able to specify the number of inverters for this array. Click the Save button to save the inverter information that you entered. Next, click the Add PV Modules link at the top of the Components list, select the manufacturer and model, of the PV modules that you'll be installing and the number of those modules to be installed. Use the drop-down menus to select a ray tracking, azimuth, tilt, and mounting method. Make sure that the correct assigned inverter is selected. If the system does not meet the minimal shading guidelines, uncheck the minimal shading checkbox and enter the shading D-rate factors for each month of the year. Click the Save button to save the PB module information. Next, enter the cost information for PV modules, inverters, permitting fees, and balance of system. Project costs are automatically saved when you click outside the text box or press the Tab key. In some programs, cost information for each component is entered in the Components section of this page. Note that PowerClerk has already calculated the design factor based on the modules, inverter, and shading information you entered previously and provides a list of program incentives that the application is eligible for. Select an incentive from the drop-down menu to complete the information on the Project Components page. If the calculated incentive amount is $0, clicking the Show Details link can often indicate the reason for that. Click the Next button to save your changes and proceed to the Application Review page. At this point, you're almost done with the reservation request. 
If the program requires wet signatures, click the Print button on the Application Review page to print a hard copy of the form and have it signed by the appropriate parties. For some programs, you can simply acknowledge the terms and conditions by checking the box at the bottom of the form. If you plan to submit documents electronically, you can scan the signed reservation request form for upload on the paperwork record page. After printing the form or checking the box, click the Next button to proceed to the paperwork record page. The paperwork record page provides a checklist to help ensure that all required forms and supporting documentation are submitted with the reservation request. If you plan to physically mail your documents, simply check the box next to each document required for your application. If you're submitting documents electronically, click the Add Attachment link to the right of each required document, then click the Browse button to locate the file on your computer. Finally, click the Attach button to upload the document. All electronic documents must be in PDF format and less than 5 megabytes in size. Some programs require all documents to be submitted electronically and others require all documents to be submitted either electronically or by mail. Items that must be physically mailed are noted as such in the list. To find information about your program's requirements, reference the information at the top of the paperwork record page or check the program guidelines for detailed information. Please review the guidelines for your program to ensure you're submitting all the necessary documents with your application. After you've finished uploading the required project documentation or indicated that you'll send it via mail, you can click the Next button to proceed to the Submit Application page. The Submit Application page is the final step before submitting your reservation request. If your application is incomplete, the Submit Incentive Application button will be disabled and this page will display a list of the information that must be completed before submittal. If all the steps are complete, you may click the Submit Incentive Application button to submit your reservation request. Once an application has been submitted, it can no longer be deleted by the applicant, but you can usually contact the program administrator to withdraw a submitted application. Upon successful submission, your application will be assigned a unique number that can be used to identify your application in the application list. Click the Continue button to return to the application list. You should now see your application in the application list, and you can click the View link at the left of the application to view or print the application at any time. When you first submit an application, its status will show that it's been submitted. As program administrators process your application, you'll see changes to the status. In most programs, when the status has been changed to indicate that your reservation has been confirmed, the incentive claim form will be available to the applicant through the Edit link in the application list. This concludes the Reservation Request segment of the PowerClerk Application Tutorial Series. In this screencast, we've shown you how to request an incentive reservation for your project and check the status of your application. For a walkthrough of the incentive payment request process, please watch the incentive claim segment of this series. PowerClerk, the Clean Energy Program Assistant.